welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with Stasi, and I am going to be doing something a little bit different. I am going to be talking about the Shizu breed. Okay, Stasi. <laughs> All right, so you are here in my bathroom today, so I am sorry about that, but this is the perfect time for me to film this morning, and so I figured why not? So let's get started. Now, first of all, I am not an expert in any breed by any means. I just do a lot of research. And because I own a Shizu, I feel like I know a little bit about the breed. And I know that some people come upon this channel in search of a different dog breed or a new dog breed and they're looking for information. So I figured I would just share what I know about the Shizu for all of you. So whether you have a Shizu or looking for a Shizu, this video may be for you. So let's start off with the origin of the Shizu. So Shizus were bred originally in Tibet, but they were developed in China. And they say that Shizus were found at the foot of the bed of many Chinese Chinese emperors to keep their feet warm. So that is kind of the history behind the Shizu. They say that they almost went extinct, but thank goodness um, they started breeding and we have this wonderful breed that we have today. Now a Shizu is a mix between a Pekingese and a Lhasa Apso. Lhasa Apso? Lhasa Apso. How do we say that? But anyway, it's a mix between those two breeds and they are a member of the toy breed in the AKC. So if you are like watching a dog show and you want to look at the Shizus, make sure you look at the toy group because that is the group that they would be in. Okay, also I want to talk a little bit about the health issues. Now, Shizus are generally a very, very healthy breed. They're a hardy breed and they're a sturdy little dog, which I love. They do have a couple of issues that you will need to watch out for. One of those issues and probably the main issue are or is eye issues. So they could have things like infections of the eyes, corneal abrasions, and that dreaded tearing. So those are the things that can happen. Um, also, the inner rolling of the eyelid could happen. Um, dystichia, which is ingrown eyelashes, can happen. So there are many um, different eye issues that could occur in a Shizu. So I always bring Stasi to a veterinary ophthalmologist once a year just to get her eyes a good checkup with all of his fancy um, equipment and make sure that everything is going okay. It is also really, really important that you keep the eyes very, very clean. And that is why I do a daily routine with her on her face every single day. We have not had one infection, um, knock on wood, no corneal abrasions, nothing like that. And her face does not stink at all. One of the things that I had reservations about when looking for the Shizu was I was so worried that I was going to get a Shizu with a stinky face. I um, used to do pet photography um, many years ago, and we used to get Shizus in, and sometimes their little faces would be so stinky, and I didn't like that at all. But I know now that it's just lack of cleaning of the eyes and that under area. And if you are diligent in that, then you will not have a Shizu with a stinky face. I promise you because her face, mm, her face smell is wonderful all the time. But I am very, very diligent. So that is, um, let's see, health issues. That's what we were on. Another health issue that I have heard about is something called intravertebral disc disease. Because Shizus have a longer back, they are prone to get back issues. So you need to watch out for that. Also, luxating patella. Any small breed does have a tendency to um, have more issues with the kneecaps like luxating out and that is called luxating patella and your vet can check for that um, on any vet visit. 
Another issue that they may have is because their little mouths are so small and they have such a smushed in face, a lot of times you will have overcrowding of the teeth and teeth issues. So it's real important that you keep up with their dentals, um, do the teeth brushing in between at home, and just make sure that you watch their teeth all the time because they can get pretty nasty if you don't take care of them. But if you take care of them, then you shouldn't have a problem. Stasi does have a few teeth that are kind of crowding a little bit, but it is kind of quote unquote normal with this breed. Um, but her teeth are nice and clean, and I do keep up with her um, brushing, her teeth brushing, and she only has a little bit of tartar at the back, like the molars, the back top and the bottom, and um, I just ordered a scaler, and my vet showed me how to just flick that off with a, sca with a scaler, so I will be doing that pretty soon, because she just has a little bit of tartar, not much at all. Um, let's see, another thing that you do need to watch out for as far as health issues is because of their short, short faces, they are what is called a brachiocephalic breed. So that means that when they sweat or get hot, they start to pant and their palate is very short. Their tongue can go back into their palate and actually obstruct their airway, which of course would cause death. So you don't want to leave a Shizu outside. They are not outside dogs. They don't do well in the heat. So if you're going to do exercising with them, make sure you keep it short and don't do it in the hottest point parts of the day. And um, just be aware, just be aware that if they're panting, just watch for their color and on their tongue and on their gums to make sure that they are not having that slippage of the tongue, which could be obstructing their airway. So you do wanna, you know, just be aware that that could be a problem. Other than that, um, I don't think any of those are really, really common health issues. Um, but other than that, the Shizu is really a healthy little breed, which I love. Now, Shizus um, can live 11 to 16 years, so that is awesome. And so they have a nice... Oh, sorry, i got to get this hair out of my face. Um, they have a nice, pretty long... Uh, lifespan, although it's never long enough. Now, as far as their size, the AKC standard says that Shizu should be between 9 and 16 pounds, so that means that they're a nice small dog, not too small, not too fragile, but they do well in any situation. So if you are a person who lives in, a par in an apartment or a big home, it doesn't matter, they will do well in any of those situations. They're a nice little size for a lap dog, and like I said, I love that they're not too big, not too small, and I think that they are just perfect size. Stasi, by the way, is um, like a couple of ounces over 10 pounds. I know that she looks like she weighs a whole lot more, but it's all that fur. Now, the height from the withers, and the withers means the shoulder right here. So if you measure from the shoulder to the ground, I believe that should be 10 to 12 inches, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. Um, so they're a short little breed and little compact little bodies, and they're just perfect. As far as the temperament goes, they are very, very loving. As you can see, Stasi is an extremely loving little Shizu. Um, she is just, she's just so sweet. I mean, they are the perfect little companion dog. They are happy, they're loving, yet playful. They just have a great, great temperament. If you get them from a well-bred uh, or a breeder who breeds for temperament and well-bred dogs. Now, I will tell you that I, in my doing my pet photography years ago, I ran across some pretty nasty Shizus, but all of those came from backyard breeders who just put two Shizus together and God only knows what ancestry they have behind them. Uh, but if you 
search a responsible breeder, and I do have a video for that in my playlist, so check that out. But if you search for a responsible breeder who breeds for confirmation and temperament, you will be so happy with the little um, personality that you get, because look at this. She's on my shoulder. Seriously? Oh, Stassi. She's so sweet, I'm telling you. So, so sweet. She's laying on my shoulder. I know you like you can, it looks like she's kind of at a weird angle, but she's actually like laying back. Like, I love you, mommy. I love you. I love you too, Stassi. <laughs> um, now, as far as exercise goes, I think that they can do well um, with any type of exercise level. So if you are an active person, I don't think that they would be one that you would, you know, want to take on long runs or things like that. But just for like daily walks, perfect. Um, so they have, I would say, like a moderate energy level and they're very, very playful. And I know Stasi loves to play with her toys. Now, let's talk about grooming. Now, the Shisu has a double coat. So the first coat is a very long, silky coat. But then we have that undercoat, and that undercoat is cottony and fluffy. So it is very, very thick because of the double coat. Shizus do take a lot of grooming. Now, most people keep Shizus in a short puppy cut. I choose to keep Stasi in a long show coat, which I can't really show you too much here, but you know, you've seen Stasi. So um, depending on what you want to do as far as whether you want to cut your dogs into a puppy cut or if you want to keep the long coat like this, no matter what, there is grooming that is going to be involved. Now, I will say that Shizu's do not shed much um, as a little piece of hair flies off of her at the moment, <laughs> but they really don't, I promise. They really are not a heavily shedding breed. I think that my short coat Chihuahua shed more than Stasi, so they don't really shed much. However, they do not. So if you are not going to be diligent with um, keeping up with the coat, which means at least 30 minutes of combing out every single day, then get your Shizu cut into a puppy cut, which is much more manageable. Now, if you do that, keep in mind that you will have the cost and um, the issue of you know going to a groomer every four to six weeks to get your Shizu cut down. So keep that in mind if you are looking for a Shizu. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? What else can I tell you? Um, let's see, so we talked about the grooming, we talked about the health issues, the origin, hmm, training. Let's talk about training. So I have heard and I have read, she likes to lick. Um, I have heard and I have read that Shizu's can be difficult to train. So I am assuming that since it is out there in so many places that this is probably correct. However, it has not been the case with Stasi. She really picked up things very, very easily and um, she was fairly easy to train. So I did get a trainer to come when she was a little puppy and I thought that she was just the brightest little puppy ever. So she picked up on things really, really quickly. Also, I've heard that they can be hard to potty train. Now Stasi took about, mm, I would say about six to eight weeks to fully potty train. So those two months seemed like forever, but then once she was potty trained, she is 100% potty trained on potty pads and she does great all the time. So they can be harder to train. Um, I would just say to definitely just um, be diligent and start early. That's all I can, you know, really recommend is just be diligent and start early. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, 
I did want to say a, one more thing about the coat. You know, a Shizu's coat will grow and grow and grow and grow until you trim it. So even though she is in a long show coat, I still do have to trim the very bottoms of her skirt because if not, they would be like this on the ground. So there is a little bit of trimming that goes on if even if you keep a Shizu in long coat. Um, and then of course, lots of other things like daily face washings and combing are a must in grooming a Shizu. So I think that is just about it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. If you are not following us on um, Snapchat or our Facebook page, you can find us by searching Stassi the Zoo. Right, Stassi? And we would love to have you join us on those platforms as well. So that is it for this. <clears throat> that is it because I have a frog in my throat. Um, that is it for this video. I will be doing a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel 101 video. So keep an eye out for that because I'm going to tell you all about Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and what I know about that lovely breed in the next video. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye. Say bye. Bye, guys. Have a great day.